Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The foundation we have to make sure of first is what is biblical salvation? Because believe it or not, there are actually unsaved Christians. There are people that would say, well, no, I'm a Christian. I, I believe in God, but yet they actually are not a biblical Christian. There are certain things that are missing that, from their faith. And if you just take one step back to verse number 7, look at Acts chapter 6, verse number 7. It says, And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. The first point is that to be a Christian, you have to be obedient to the faith. What this is saying is not that it's works to get to heaven, but rather it is faith alone. I want you to turn ahead to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. There are two words I want you to remember when it comes to what is a biblical Christian, and that is everlasting gift. It's an everlasting gift gift that is what salvation of the soul is and you know a, you know a gift would imply that it's not earned or it's not bought it's not something you had to do to achieve and the fact that it's eternal everlasting means that it lasts forever it's never lost it can never be forsaken it'll never be taken from you once god gives this to you he's given you his word he will protect it and preserve it and a lot of people will say, well, to be a Christian, you said everlasting in gift. I didn't hear repent of your sins. Right? Well, let me tell you, the Bible does not teach you have to repent of your sins to be saved. Right, right. This is a very important point. A lot of people are confused by that. The word repent simply means to turn, to change what direction you're going, to change your mind, to change your heart. I was driving up this road yesterday. I was going north. I repented. I started going south. There was no sin involved. I wasn't in sin because of the direction I was going. People get confused about the word repent. Whenever they hear the word repent, they think automatically it means you have to stop sinning to be saved. But really it means to change or to turn. You're in Acts chapter 11. Hold your place there. In, in Matthew 21 of Jesus warning the Jewish leaders, He said, when you had seen it, repented not afterward that you might believe on Him. Jesus defined repentance as believing. And He said to the Pharisees, the hypocrites, He said, hey, you don't believe. You have not repented because you didn't change your heart. So again, repent means to turn. It's to change your mind about how you get saved, about what you have to do to go to heaven. You're in Acts chapter 11. Find verse 21. Verse number 21. It says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Now go to Romans chapter 6. So here it clearly defines, it says, first we saw where it says that they, they were obedient to the faith, and Jesus says it repented they, and believed, and then the same thing in Acts chapter 11, you believe and turn. So it's, it's in your mind, in your heart, you have to acknowledge, you have to change your mind about salvation, you have to realize that maybe you're going the wrong way about the wrong thing. Yeah. Right? To get to heaven, your soul is what goes to heaven, it's not your body. And too many people think, well, I have to get this body perfect. I have to repent of all my sins in my body to get to heaven. But it's not your body that's going to heaven. Your body will never be perfect. In Mark chapter 1, he says, And the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. When Jesus preached repentance, he defined it by saying, Believe the gospel. That's right. Believe the gospel. Now, we're, we're going to define the gospel here. In Hebrews 6, it tells us that repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So you have to repent of trusting in your dead works and turn to believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You have, if you're trusting in your own works, if you say, well, I think I'm good enough to get to heaven. Well, I know Jesus opened the door, but now it's my responsibility to say, I'm sorry every night before I go to bed. That is dead works because you're doing it on your own. You have to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to turn from trusting in your own works. Turn from believing in your heart that you're somehow good enough or that you will balance it out. And you have to turn and trust in Jesus alone in that free gift. It's either free or there's nothing. He said it's a free gift. You have to believe that Jesus paid for all of your sins. 
Not just a few of them. Not just the small ones. The big ones. Not just the obvious sins. He paid for the secret sins also. You know, the Bible says that the thought of foolishness is sin. You understand? I mean, some people think, well, the Ten Commandments. Yeah, but it's bigger than that. Right? If you're sitting around dreaming about winning the lottery, that's a sin. Right? That's a thought of foolishness. If, if you're just exaggerating, and you're, well, that's not really a lie. Well, hey, that's a sin. There are many things we do that are sins, and when you break God's law, there is a punishment, and that punishment is the death of the soul. You know, so we saw earlier, we said that many of the priests were obedient to the faith. You're in Romans chapter 6. Find verse number 17. Romans chapter 6, verse number 17. It says, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. So what is salvation? It's obeying in your heart. It's on having a pure conscience before God, truly trusting in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation. He says, in your heart, right? Obey means to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul. There's only one way to heaven. Mohammed won't get you there. Buddha won't get you there. Right. The Catholic Church won't get you there. They're all preaching works. They're all saying, if you're good enough, you might make it in. And that is a lie. We're all found guilty. There are none righteous. No, not one. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We've all broken God's law. And because of that, we deserve judgment. That judgment is hell. Look at verse 22 in this chapter. Verse 22, it says, But now being made free from sin and becoming servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Writing to a saved person, he's saying, hey, you were not saved. Now you are saved. Now you're free from sin. You don't have to pay the punishment for sin. That has been paid for you. All the sins have been paid for. You're free from sin. What's the end of that? Everlasting life. Right? Going to heaven, being with God when you die. Look at the next verse, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Wages are something you earn. You may earn a minimum wage. You earn a wage at work for what you do. We deserve death and hell because of our sin. The death it's referring to is not just your body. It's also dealing with your soul. Listen, the Bible teaches a concept of eternal security. He says that everlasting life, that lasts forever. There's a phrase people will use, once saved, always saved. I love that term. I don't have any problems with that term because the Bible is clear. Once your soul is saved, it will always be saved. And there's no guarantee your flesh is going to become perfect. And I think that's where a lot of people get it mixed up. They somehow think, well, I've got to get my body right. Well, once I am saved, then I'll stop sinning. But that's a lie. That's impossible. No one in here can say, well, I have stopped sinning. I have quit. Doing. Hey, no. The thought of foolishness is sin. To exaggerate is a sin. Right? To, to covet something that does not belong to you is a sin. We're all found guilty under God's law. We all deserve the punishment. And thank God He gives us eternal security. You know, the Bible says, no man will pluck you out of my hand. Right? I use the example, I'm holding, if I'm holding my daughter by the hand and she tries to run away from me, it doesn't take much effort or strength for me to pull her back. I'm bigger than her. I got her. Right? God the Father is the same way with your soul. When you put your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, He forever has you in His hand. No man can pluck you out of His hand, not even yourself. Right? And listen, the Bible also says that in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God has promised you the gift of eternal life. If He were a liar... He would take it back from you and it would not be eternal. Either eternal lasts from ever or it doesn't. Either eternal and His promise is something that is a sure thing or you're constantly in jeopardy wondering if you're saved or not saved. And that goes back to what's in your heart. What are you trusting in? If you're trusting in your own ability, in your own works, plain and simple, you will not make it to heaven. You know, the Bible says, by His own blood, entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us all. Once He died, once He paid for sin, and now what we have is being redeemed in the soul forever, eternally. Like I said, the wages of sin is death, 
The Bible teaches that there, the second death, there is death and hell, that your soul will perish is another example it uses. John 3.16 that says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you put your trust on Jesus Christ, if you're willing to humble yourself and say, well, I've been trying it my way, I'm going to repent of my way, and I'm going to have faith toward God, God has made you a promise that you can have the free gift. God bought you a gift. It's totally free. He's offering it to you. And if you don't have that, you're not a biblical Christian. So the first point here is that you have to be a biblical Christian. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And keep your place there in Romans 6. We're going to go right back to it. The Bible teaches in, in, Gen, in uh, Revelation 20, it talks about death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Because of my sin, because I've broken God's law, I deserve to be cast into hell. And hey, maybe my sin's not bad as yours. Maybe yours isn't as bad as mine, but it doesn't matter. We're all found guilty. We have all done things that are worthy of judgment of God. And He's made us this promise that we deserve hell, but He promises eternal life. He promises a free gift to get out of hell Amen. if we would only put our faith in Him alone. Right. Of course, Jesus died and went to hell for your sin. Yeah, he that punishment you deserve of, of burning in hell, Jesus died and went to hell. He died for your sins, yes, and He went to hell. It says, He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that His soul was not left in hell. Now you're in 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to see the simplicity of the Gospel here. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So here, you have to believe the gospel. So what is the gospel? It defines it right here for us. Verse 2, By which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Listen, there are some people that have believed in vain. Those are fake Christians. Those are people that say, well, I'll give Jesus a try. But in their heart, they're not really believing. They're not trusting in Him alone. They say, well, I'll give it a test run. But these people he's writing to, he's defining the gospel, he says, ye are saved. That's present tense. It happens right now while you're still alive. And once you are saved, you're always saved. It's not something you have to work out over time and try to figure out if you still are saved. In fact, if you're in that position, I would challenge you, I would say you're not really saved. Yeah. If you feel like if you just did the wrong thing, that you would go to hell, then you're not saved. If you say, well, I'm not a murderer, but if you murdered, you would certainly have to go to hell. Well, guess what? We all deserve hell. And guess what? God has provided the free gift, the opportunity to get out of hell. Look at the next verse, verse number 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Jesus was God. He paid for everything you'll ever do that's wrong. He's already paid for it. And He's offering you eternal redemption in the form of a gift. The gift has been paid for. It's purchased. It's freely available. It's up to you to take it. If you reject it and say, oh, I'm not ready for it, then guess what? You're on your way to hell. Well, maybe later in life, or, or I know I still think I have to try to be a good person. You're rejecting the free gift. He's, he died for your sins. You don't have to die for Him. You don't have to go to hell. Look at verse 4. And that He was buried... And He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So what is the Gospel? To believe that Jesus died for your sins. To trust that he he, they put His body in the tomb and He came back to life. He resurrected of His own power. Amen. Listen, only God can bring the dead back to life. Only God can forgive sins. And He's offering you that as a gift. You have to have faith that God paid your sin debt 100%. Every sin you'll ever commit has already been paid for. Now it's up to you to take that free gift. Amen. Turn back to Romans chapter 6. In John 1.12 it says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Listen, power in the Christian life starts with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Believing that Jesus was God. He is the Son of God. He is the one that purchased your redemption trusting in Him alone.